Welcome to the Smartcom Summit 2021, the winter edition. We will be talking about the future of modern work and customer experience. And we live in exciting times, so there's a lot to talk about. We will talk about modern work, customer engagement, we will be talking about leadership, uh, and actually uh, there's some interactivity as well. You guys can participate in this event uh, through Twitter, hashtag SmartCom21. Uh, we will be looking back on 18 months of Corona COVID pandemic. Uh, and we'll be talking to two representatives of uh, major companies uh, on my uh, right hand side, uh, representing Microsoft and Anywhere 365. And I'm joined on my left side by Rob Curver. He's in a way the big initiator of these events and summits. Thank you for all the work you put in. Uh, let me introduce our, our two guests. And I'll, I'll start uh, with you, Enrico Karsten. is the CEO of Anywhere 365. I, I was looking at your website uh, and you are talking about uh, one of your uh, goals for your customers, reduce unnecessary dialogues as a kickoff. What is going on? Reduce unnecessary dialogues. Well, What's to going on? To start off, this is a necessary dialogue. Uh, Thank and, you very and, much. And a small correction because I'm, I'm the managing director of uh, Anywhere 365, so I don't want to, uh, you know, f uh, take false claims over here because I've got someone else that does the CEO job for me. Uh, unnecessary dialogues. Yeah, uh, shall we believe that um, time is in essence the most valuable uh, uh, possession that we have as a collective in, within organizations, and and we are here to 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 make that time effort uh, focused on as many valuable uh, communications and activities for our customers and their customers. So we believe in reducing unnecessary activities or unnecessary dialogues in our specific space uh, to, to, to help them with this acquisition and to make sure that we spend our time collectively on the right things. How we happen to make software that, uh, that, that, that enables them. And how often is communication or meetings, for example, dialogues unnecessary? Is that something that happens often or just every now and then? Well, I think uh, over the course of every service or of service focused organization, there are many unnecessary dialogues. When you when you look at the times that you yourself in, in, as a consumer have to uh, dial an energy uh, uh, manufacturer or whatever with information requests that you could already have via different channels or you could maybe get a hold on via automatic digitalized uh, channels instead of just talking to people or reaching out to people who have very valuable time to do other stuff. Uh, I think that that represents our uh, our means of existence. Yeah. yeah. And talking about necessary and maybe unnecessary dialogues, that brings me to our second guest, uh, Remco de Kramer with Microsoft. Uh, I was looking at your website and you talk, uh, of course, a lot about Microsoft Teams. And I quote, since its launch, Microsoft Teams has become the fastest growing app in Microsoft's history. Congratulations. How big is it now? Thank you. Yeah, I still remember the days, and that was not long ago. Uh, it was for COVID uh, that there were that there were um, 30 million uh, active users. Today, it's uh, 250 million active users. So we can safely say that Microsoft Teams has be has become uh, the new front end for work and customer engagement too. So. Yeah, well, that might be impressive numbers. What, what I like the most is that the rate of innovation has accelerated Im exponentially too. That's, that's what crises do, huh? Yeah, exactly. And that's what right. you see here. And of course, um, uh, during COVID, uh, the demands users put forth on uh, our product have risen as well uh, with a shift to remote and hybrid work. So when you look at uh, last year, in, in one year, we released 300 new uh, features, for example, for Microsoft Teams. So the product is really adapting eh, at a rapid pace eh, to this new reality of hybrid work. Yeah. But uh, before we came on live, we were talking about Microsoft Teams and, and you said, and quote me if I, I don't quote you correctly, people should have less meetings. So in other words, use Teams less <laughs> You're Absolutely. Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big advocate for uh, that, that we stop the meeting madness. I think it is meeting it's gotten madness. out of control. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at a day and um, there are um, people have never been in uh, meetings more uh, since um, uh, since the start of COVID. It has almost become synonymous with uh, remote work. And I think what's really important for people to thrive and also for companies to thrive is that they focused on the work that's most meaningful or most important for them. And they cannot do that when they don't have large chunks of uh, uninterrupted focus time. And meetings just gets in that way. 
And we you would assume maximum. you would assume with using Teams or one of the, the Zoom or whatever you want to use. I mean, you want to want them to use Teams, of course. I mean, you would assume you save a lot of time because you don't have to go actually to meet. You have, don't have to jump in a car or a train and go somewhere, have a meeting, and go back. So you would assume uh, you save a lot of time, but actually. Yeah. We don't because we have more meetings than ever. Well, but technology is only so great. Um, uh, the, um, uh, the benefit of technology depends on how it gets adopted. If we have a mentality that for every decision that needs to ma be made or every update needing, we need to plan a meeting, um, then this technology will facilitate you, but you use the technology in a wrong way. So what we actually we would like is that people have uh, less meetings and work more asynchronously uh, together. Um, I have a lot of examples for that, but uh, maybe that's, uh, that's a bit too soon for now. But I think we need to find a way to balance synchronous work with asynchronous work. So working within a meeting and working outside of the meeting. But, but, but basically, we, we lowered the barriers to have meetings. Yeah. So a lot of Make people... Make it so easy so to yeah. touch, yeah. To button touch the button and just go into a meeting. And that, uh, what I can see is that a lot of people just tap into a meeting to get something solved or to get their head around a big problem instead of thinking themselves there first. And the second of it is that you call it meetings. Uh, using Teams is, is like having a meeting. Well, peer-to-peer -peer communications is just peer-to-peer -peer communications. But over the... Over the yeah, over the use of teams, we call it meetings, but mm -hmm. we just have peer-to-peer -peer communications as well. There's this old just by viewing someone, it's not a meeting uh, necessarily. There's this old cartoon pre-pandemic that uh, says that uh, I didn't feel like working, so I organized a meeting. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And there's a whole, whole whole collection of those. Uh, so yeah. so this concept of meetings as being the es essence of work in some organizations is kind of special. But and now it's so easy to have an online meeting. I feel bored. So I'll and people feel efficient or feel productive in some organizations or yeah. when their calendar is booked with meetings. Right. So I like what you said about finding a yeah. balance. I think it's also very personal balance that we need to find and that makes it so complicated. I remember when we started with the first summit at the start of COVID, we were wondering whether we should ever, we would ever go back to the office as we knew it, right? Will this be a phase, maybe work a little bit from the office and at home? I think now if you look around, we're, look, we're going into a hybrid world, right? Mm. Because we see the benefits of work from home. But now the challenge is how to model that and how to improve work and improve office or redefine it yeah. using technology but also organization and leadership so i you, you to be you, your personal experience this past 18 months i was triggered by that when we talked earlier you turned your shed into an office the world yeah. changed yeah. in your personal life as well uh, <laughs> yeah definitely so uh, me uh, being a father of two young kids i didn't want to work at home uh, from home at all so i always worked at the office so and suddenly offices closed i had to work from my living room or my bed uh, dip in the bed depending on where my kids were not present <laughs> so uh, I got back pain of course so then I moved to uh, uh, to my bedroom but after one and a half year I realized yeah maybe I want to do other things in the bedroom than uh, than work okay so we had a uh, an old tool <laughs> shed. took a long time <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah I'm not he, I'm he not had two fan. kids already <laughs> <laughs> exactly. very old-fashioned yeah. yeah so then um, uh, we, we live in our old uh, in, in a grandfather's home uh, and he had a, uh, a shack in the in the garden uh, for its tools and, and everything so took those out, uh, converted it into an office, and now I realize that how important it is to have a dedicated space uh, where you work. Yeah. Uh, so that was one learning. Other learning is that I'm a, a big advocate of uh, asynchronous work as well, right. and we see that happening more often. Uh, we, uh, when I look at my colleagues, a lot of them are actually working in the evenings. Myself, I'm working for one and a half hour every evening yeah. and I really like it that way I wouldn't prefer it any other way is that also because you're an international organization so in the evening you have your US contacts or is it also mostly the personal f 
Uh, this is this is mapping old fashioned uh, yeah, I know. It on, on what we are trying I agree. to yeah I agree so that's what I'm asking yeah so, yeah. so that's too we were I was a, a bit used to it but I didn't do it often so now I do it every night and the reason why I like it is that because I can stop uh, at four o'clock play with my kids or start working at ten o'clock and then have yeah. an easy start with yeah. the family and then going back to asynchronous work uh, I really judge uh, the meeting requests I have and when it's an update meeting I choose uh, not uh, to be there. Uh, physically present but to watch back the recordings in the evening mm -hmm. and because I'm not going to spend my time on watching a one hour recording the every meeting is transcribed nowadays so I can search for the most yeah. relevant part yeah. and yeah. I only watch back yeah. Yeah, that specific part specific and that part, saves yeah. me so for one meeting it can save me 50 minutes yeah. uh, and 50 the 50 minute bonus is nice yeah. but I also consume it at a time um, when I more yeah. convenient, yeah, yeah, when it's more convenient for me. And this is the technology, so that's actually helping you then to live or to work or to be more efficient, more effective at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And your work-life balance is more is more hey, in, in harmony hey, with right. each other. Yeah, but technology has a little stake in that, to my concern. Yeah. It's mostly it's about the main thing? no. The storyline that you do you started this question with is is like man. I re I recall the paper that uh, Bill Gates wrote on the the modern work. Uh, so uh, the new world of work 20 and years ago yes yeah, 20 years ago and i'm almost ashamed that we are still on this table <laughs> talking about the transition still on page one of the paper <laughs> yeah well, well well we yeah so um of course technology is is an enabler in that space but still it's it's more the the uh, to be able to rely on responsibilities of people to have uh, good goal settings if you want and to be able to measure business progress and stuff like that and to have, let's say, middle management trained on not managing people in terms of time spent, but more in terms of what they achieve. Yeah. This is the biggest, I think, uh, um, challenge that we were facing and still are facing mm -hmm. with these dynamics. So yeah. does that mean that you're changing now? I mean, you started at Anywhere 365 half a year ago. Yeah. I hate the 365 part. <laughs> anyway, yeah. you started there half a year ago. Yeah. In the middle of the pandemic, yeah. um, are you changing things around? Yeah. Well, I think that the biggest learning for me overall during the whole COVID period related to work is my entrance uh, within the Anywhere 365 uh, organization because of um, it's almost unheard of how big a challenge it is to enter a company only online. And to have the, the the idea that it's all just the same, you can tap into uh, and reach out to everybody. Everybody's on your fingertips. You can have meetings and, and spend all the time you want. But still, the element of being a cohesive company with some some sense of feeling and how it looks and how it feels, in, uh, yeah. which office uh, office most of the time represents that feeling or represents that culture. It's um, very difficult to to to. Yeah, to to hold on to to yeah. to really connect to people. Because it, it, it's not only the Friday afternoon drinks and having fun, but but you know, it, it's water cooler talk or coffee machine talk. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you but run into people you wouldn't meet or. But it's also it's it's really I thought about this uh, two weeks ago when when uh, we had someone leaving the company uh, went to uh, another company of course and I realized that in essence yeah. nothing yeah. changes. You know, he just opens the same laptop mm -hmm. and suddenly he is part of a totally different business stream. But in essence, in his environment, nothing really changes. So, so he's I mean, still at the table at home. He still has an own laptop. He still has the same sounds. So there are two big elements here. Also, when it comes to customer experience, it, it's productivity and it's creativity, right? Mm. And you need them both in order to, I mean, it's talking about thriving in challenging times. Um, your companies are doing great, but if you want to continue to thrive in challenging times, you need also creativity. Yeah, you course. need innovation. Yeah. Uh, and how hard is it in times of Corona to stay on track when it comes to innovation that have gone? Yeah, well, you have to keep getting better and better and better. So, so that is definitely a learning. Eh? When we look back at how we worked in this crisis, eh? we all learned how to work from remote. People went above and beyond to eh? uh, to keep being productive. They succeeded. Eh? We, we've, we've never been as productive as before. But the downside was is you need to 
see each other in order to brainstorm effectively or to create a team bond or a good huh, onboarding experience. So working from remote is definitely not a, a situation which you can sustain for extended period of time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it, it comes at the expense of innovation then I think. So fortunately now eh, we've entered the area of hybrid work where right. we can choose to have meetings at the office for specific types of meetings that require creativity eh, or problem solving. So the good thing here is that we can combine the best of both worlds. So eh, make a conscious choice whether you will do the meeting from home because then it's more efficient yeah. or whether to be more effective, eh, you need to do the meeting from the office. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, but then, but then this office th office changes, right? The office space very practical changes because you have it's a meeting place. It's yeah. a meeting place, but it becomes an online hybrid meeting place instead of a traditional meeting place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's that's the big challenge that we have right now, uh, from an implementation or practical operational point of view. There's there's a lot of changes to be made to whatever the office space is or the layout. What sort of rooms do you need? Yeah, um, but also the organization and the way of working and expectations and mindset and who's in control, right? It, uh, do you have the same uh, 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 stake or the same position if you're remote working or should you go to the office if you can because you have a better yeah, yeah. presence? Yeah. yeah, but still in the whole vibe of, of the hybrid office in terms of making it a meeting place is not, not not as easy as you would s you would think of because we are still plotting traditional working methodologies or uh, departments, so, you sp uh, so to speak, that need to get a place into this hybrid office. So you, ha you have some specific demands for your support organization or for your right. delivery organization, whatever. You cannot uh, change that. So, that so I think that's a challenge. But uh, you were relating t uh, to uh, keep on being innovative during these times. We are talking about, we are referring to the fact that how we could work in terms of uh, innovation or what types of innovation are needed to help us go through these thriving times. Yeah, because also yeah, I, I hear people, uh, you were saying, you know, the meeting mania. Um, in Dutch, I hear very often the sentence, ik ben zo klaar met die online meetings. I'm done with meeting online. I want to yeah. meet people. I want to be with people. I'm done. <laughs> that is a challenge for companies like you guys because yeah. y you you know offer the products that enable these meetings and mm -hmm. are supposed to make them better and better to, to yeah. make it a better and more pleasant more productive more creative experience right but but the the I, I, I cannot ask this to Remco because I know they get educated very well on how to use and promote the technology and what type <laughs> of uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask Rob yeah. if if you if you uh, will if you are have access to my calendar and you are going going to invite me on a meeting next week mm -hmm. and you tap into my calendar and you see an empty week in terms mm -hmm. of meetings what is the first thing you think La a lazy guy <laughs> uh, rest my case or corona <laughs> rest my case no, but the no, 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 this yeah. is what this is truly what is happening. Yeah, so people block times as well yeah. to not, yeah, to not have the have the image of being not productive. So, yeah. so let's say calendar items and having meetings is like uh, is 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 an analogy for being busy enough. It's an which alibi, is, which so is so so sort of an alibi. Right? Yeah. So this needs to change. Yeah. So yeah. we have to. I want to have an empty agenda and still your your trust that I'm very busy on the right things. Yeah, or productive or valuable. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 this resonates with me because I grew up thinking that you need to work very hard in order to be successful. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I've been trying to deal with for a long time in my working life, right? And it's, it's, it is hard, it's difficult. And of course, one of the tricks, and this also relates to how do you manage your time, I mean, for this, I don't have an empty agenda. I have blocks. I Why have is it hard? Blocks. Why is it hard? Personally, I think, I mean, and it's the, it's the it uh, maybe a very Dutch thing or very, very Calvinistic thing, right? If you work hard, you yeah. will, you will do well and you will go to heaven or whatever, yeah. something, it'll, 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 it'll so like it. something. Certainly not COVID. Uh, right, right. And, and, um, yeah, create a heaven in AR. Yeah, right. But what is difficult about that? What is difficult? It's difficult. I find it. It's. It's in a way. It's. It's. It's um, uh, addictive. 
to work, okay. right? And and I guess that's that's something uh, that we see on social media as well. It's addictive to get the likes. So it's I, addictive I, to yeah. get. I think for many people, being in the meetings, and getting the feedback. Okay, I did another. It's it's the same kind of addiction, isn't I it? I think because I like the example of of uh, I'm I grew up in the same uh, with the same uh, mindset. Uh, the key for me is that it's not visible. So it's not visible anymore mm -hmm. how productive you are and how much energy you are putting in things yeah. because you're you're basically isolated, more individual. Yeah. Uh, and hence, th that's why I'm asking about the agenda. That's the only mean you have to show yeah. that you're truly committed to doing. Well, that's interesting. I mean, because you know, you know both worlds, right? The startup world where you're focused on getting something uh, to work produce very something, hard. work it's very hard, <laughs> work very hard, but be you're, 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 you're work working towards hours. a goal, towards yeah. a goal, and the corporate life where it's more scheduled for you, let's put it that way, right? Yeah. And, and, and yeah. You, you go with the flow. Unless you are um, at the absolute top, but everything else is... Well, and I, and I guess if you're, I think if you're at the top, you still, your time gets managed because your PA will, yeah, will okay. just make or yeah. arrange your calendar. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, 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 you live the, the company life. You've been in both of these worlds, mm -hmm. right? In the past 20 years, uh, as have I. Um, what's easier? Or if you look at today's time, right, the change of COVID. Mm -hmm. What is easier? Oh, sorry. easier? Are we going to, switch to, to, to some sort of blend of those two worlds? Or are we going not. to the startup? I hope not. I would, I would be very much in favor of going to, le well, startup is, is, a, is a buzzword as well, but startup scale up gives a sort of vibe that uh, lets creativity uh, uh, in. Uh, um, have the possibility to be innovative, have the possibility to to schedule your own achievements and, yep. and, and work hard for it. I would say those are the elements that are very crucial for us to survive in the next coming decades. Yeah. But then again, you know, I've, I've been in a corporate as well, have not a lot of experience in it, only a couple of years, uh, but I've seen how that works as well. So it works. I don't understand it, <laughs> but it works. Yeah, so it's okay. a big machine. You put yeah. something in, and it does what it does, and then the same uh, uh, the same asset comes out of it. And how is that? How is that at Microsoft? Because I, I I admire Microsoft in that sense because you've been I mean on this modern work for twenty years or so since Bill Gates wrote that paper. Um, it is actually I mean you had an, 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 you're an example uh, of a workplace years ago, right? So very modern and little couches and little rooms and everything, and so and you're living this life. Great YouTube clips, I remember. Yeah. All that, yeah. and it's and, and you're living there, and so and it is a corporate. I know it's an American corporate, right, with the goals and 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 everything, and the pr procedures. And at the same time, there is this culture of of, of innovation, and and uh, personal responsibility and leadership. So how 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 is that done? Well, it's the first is what's happening today eh, is nothing new for Microsoft. That a transition and the different way of how we work. The only thing that's different is that it's being adopted on a massive scale right now. And um, we are uh, in, in, in different circumstances. And what you said triggered me um, that it's hard for people uh, to know what you're doing and that you have to trust uh, that somebody is actually uh, doing their work. We have a saying at Microsoft, they say, work out loud. So let people know uh, what you're doing because you're missing this uh, physical contact. You actually have to um, uh, compensate for that and let other people know what you're doing, give them a chance to contribute to what you are doing uh, and make it a, a shared goal or project, right. for example. So I think this, uh, and that is the most challenging thing, is that when we want to make a successful transition to hybrid work, we really need to change the way uh, that we're working. We need new rituals. Uh, how we work yeah. and for example one is have work out loud let other people know what you're doing and give them a chance to contribute to your work yeah but you you it's not really fair eh, because you asked this question to uh, to Remco and uh, represents a company that has innovation tech innovation at the core of its existence so I would say that if you take another example of an enterprise or a corporate organization and ask them the same question, you get totally different mm -hmm. answer. Yeah. 
Well, but the thing is that Microsoft sort of didn't exist 40 years ago and now is the number one and number two largest, biggest company yeah. in the world and going well and, and we just heard about the many users of Teams. Yeah. It's, it's well, and in the tech world, it's one of the oldies, Microsoft. Yeah. Well, it's, they've been a long it's, way more but than... But apparently you're doing something right. Yeah, something's working there, course, right? And, and, and you could say that for many tech, I, I think that's intriguing, many of the high-tech software companies are now leading yeah. in their space and they've grown from nothing to big. They're doing something right. And I think that's interesting. What's the learnings for other organizations? Uh, and you can go, well, it's a growth mindset and a this and a that. But I'm looking for, you just mentioned something very simple, work out loud. Yeah. Is there a simple list? Is there a cookbook? Is, is there, there a, a playbook? Is there a chip? <laughs> is, is, there there something, is there a chip? Is there, is there something is there that we can absorb? I think uh, <laughs> one, one, part of one reason for the success is that you need to build um, uh, solutions that are flexible uh, to everybody's work style. So that can cater to the individual work style uh, everybody has. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that is what, uh, for example, Microsoft Teams is, is doing. It doesn't matter where you work or how you work the software is, is flexible enough and uh, so you can use it. For example, have meetings, um, uh, not uh, have, have physical meetings, try to find each other, use yeah. Teams for that. Okay. Have remote meetings. So you're have saying that Teams, teams. so that you're, you're putting some of the knowledge and experience of, 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 of how Microsoft works and is successful, you're trying to put that more into the, let's say the Teams platform and ecosystem as we go along? Yeah, definitely. So everybody can become more like Microsoft in their way of working or no, but you I need a lot of flexibility because every you company know is well, different. You know as well that the technology and the way they adopt it is not the problem. The real problem here is I love the way Remco proposes this because I, in essence I would, I would want everybody to work like this. Show, uh, work out loud, not necessarily because I, I want to make sure that you're doing the right things, but just to, to be connected on the topics that, that matter to you. Yeah. But then again, please facilitate the people that need to work out loud because they, they, don't, they have the means and the tooling now yeah. But that doesn't mean that they know how to do this in terms of timing, what they share, how they react on it. And there, there are examples enough of people that work out loud and get responses of what they're doing and have 24 hours a day absorbed in re responding to responses. Yeah. And they're at home uh, one day, not feeling very well. <laughs> Let's talk in the, in the final minutes of, of this segment, uh, looking a little further into the future. Maybe a little bit of a crystal ball. Um, and it's not just about what features should we add to Teams or other software in the next half, six months or two years or something. A little further down the road, I mean, you guys must be thinking about it. Is that virtual reality? Is it augmented reality? Is it more AI, artificial intelligence? What are we talking about when you talk about Teams 2025? I don't know. Well, what, what's, the, what's the direction of, of thinking in, in your innovative departments? We're exploring eh, multiple course, uh, options yeah. here. And um, one interesting concept is that you can meet in what we call the metaverse, eh, that there is a virtual space eh, where you can come together, either see each other physically or via avatars interact with each other. But then the nice thing is, you look the other way, you see a group having a meeting there, there is a PowerPoint presentation on a virtual wall, you go there and you're in that meeting. So that's one space eh, we explore. Very scary space. Very scary space. Yeah, personally, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm experimenting with it. I have the gear at home. Uh, yeah, you do? Oh, really? Yeah, Which I do. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know, uh, what, I don't the see I don't using know what the status is of the metaverse uh, testing then. So what type of environment are you using for that? It's, a, it's an internal development. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So um, I'm exploring it. Personally, I don't see myself having the majority of meetings in, in the metaverse. Okay. Now, then there's another technology. It's called augmented reality. And that's where you have your glasses on and then a, a additional layer of uh, reality is, is played uh, on top of the physical yeah, reality. Right. So that's an interesting scenario, especially for um, niche markets, for example, remote advisor applications. So where everybody's in a Teams meeting, but there's a situation going on. Uh, for example, some part of equipment is broken. Somebody needs to go there. They put on their HoloLens. Everybody can see what they see and support them. For example, drawing lines on have with bu which button he has to push. This is already the case. Yeah. This is already the case. But the thing here is, it's not massively adopted. Uh -huh. So I see that technology being mm. adopted more broadly before, for example, meeting in the metaverse. Is, uh, uh, you said metaverse is oh, scary. What's scary about it? Well, scary is the, the, uh, is the, the way that that will push us. I don't want to be all dark and all uh, 
uh, into the, the, the what is it called again, the, 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 the sequence of, of sapiens tapping into the AR world and having, mm. I, th the scary thing about metaverse for me is that we are, b it's, it's the beginning of being socially completely disconnected and uh, mm. have a push to more individuality and loss, l lose contact with, the, with uh, we started this meeting about uh, physical contact and the lack of physical contact during COVID and what it means in the vibe and connection of people. But isn't that a very old-fashioned way of thinking? I mean, yeah, it is. every it single is. technological transition, you know, <laughs> we hear the same stories. I mean, this is going to be the end of the world. It's going to spoil no, our no, no. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, are you not very... But what I mean, is the... What is the I am. Impressive instead of so conservative. No, no. So, so okay. So, maybe is it conservative? Maybe to to see mm. to see uh, some the danger. So, yeah, <laughs> well maybe. Well maybe the danger is that Remco won't leave his bed anymore because he, <laughs> he doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll he doesn't need to check anymore. <laughs> we'll <stick it> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but in the end, I I, I I must you know I'm a, maybe a practical guy in that, that that sense. I must see the the true advantages of these developments, and I don't see them yet, other than getting us more away from from from. Uh, groups but and contacts. But isn't that what people said 10 years ago about the iPhone? I don't know. We'll see uh, how that. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes. Back about the television and way back about the car and the train and the plane and everything. Yeah, uh, well but we have a major challenge, I think, ahead for us because that switching to remote work was mm -hmm. easy compared to switching to hybrid work. Yeah. Before discussing in those, uh, before meeting in those kind of situations, let's learn how to meet in a hybrid way. Yeah. Because yeah. the fact of today is that the majority of companies cannot facilitate a hybrid meeting for their employees. Yep. And the result of that is that people working from home, and maybe they have to work from home, eh, they don't have a choice, for example, right. that day, they are um, not contributing to that meeting. They can't see the people in the room well, they can't hear yeah. them. Yep. People in the room, because a presentation is shared, can't see the people who join from remote and lose connection, for mm. example. So those basic elements eh, to get a good hybrid meeting organized is still lacking yep. for the majority of organizations. And when you don't get hybrid meetings, eh, when you cannot facilitate that, your hybrid work strategy won't work. Right. So, so that's there's the a lot step. to be worked. The first step today. now, really, for next year, next two years, is really that hybrid workspace, office space, home space. Everybody get a shack or some tiny house in yep. the backyard yep. and make the first step. Mm -hmm. Could be. I think so. Yeah. If you need a tiny house for it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have a big house. Uh, no, I'm not. I, I don't have a shack. <laughs> you have room tiny house. <laughs> in your house, yeah. <laughs> it's good too. It's okay, good we too. have to leave it there for, for now. We'll see each other a little later in, in, in the program. Mm -hmm.